perhaps the world's greatest, most popular Catholic YouTuber, and that is Bernardo Custer. He has almost 800,000 subscribers on YouTube. He's insanely popular in Brazil, and he's here to talk to us today about the Amazon Synod, the Amazonian region. Who is Our Lady of the Amazon? What are these Pacha idols? Where do they come from? Uh, and a bunch of other things relating to bishops, liberation, theology, uh, the history, the traditional movement in Brazil, Bishop Castro Meyer, all kinds of things. So, Bernardo, welcome. It's such an honor to have you today. Thank you. Thank you, Taylor. It's such an honor for me to be here. I'm still in Rome and happy to contribute and help uh, people to understand better what is happening here in Rome and what happened actually during this month and very, you know, complicated month for us Catholics in, <laughs> in so many ways. So help to uh, here and uh, I'm here to help. Yes. Excellent. All right. Well, before we jump into it, we'll ask our father to help us. We'll pray the Our Father in Latin. In nomine Patris, et Fidei, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Pater Noster, qui es in Celis, sanctificetur nomen Tuum, advenia regnum Tuum, fiat voluntas Tua, sicut in Cielo et in Terra. Panem nostrum quotidianum da nobis odie, et dimite nobis debita nostra, sicut et nos dimitimus debitoribus nostros, et ne... Non inducas in tentation, sed libera nos amalum. Amen. Amen. Nomine Patris, et Fidi, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Amen. Okay, so you're in Rome. How long have you been in Rome, Bernardo? Rome is, is nice now. It's uh, raining. It's so it's not so so hot as it was before during the Senate. And the, um, I would say the cultural climate here is now cooling down because things was, were very heat. You know, people were very worried. So... And uh, there are some things happening now that yesterday, for example, um, Monsignor uh, Sancho Surondo had a meeting with some um, governors of subnational regions in Amazon. And they were um, talking about, for example, um, creating an international funding for um, actions or climate actions in, uh, in, in Amazon. And they're trying to push um, forward also this um, cl uh, climate psychosis that I call like this. This, um, this so they are too worried. I think about these things, and uh, also Amazon, as um, I already explained uh, elsewhere. And also, they are trying also to use the Pontifical Academy of Sciences of the Vatican to give them what they want in terms of knowledge, research, numbers, and everything else to. Um, or academical and scientific support to their agenda. Also, there was a man, this uh, Alexis Arthur from the UN, who signed also this kind of um, agreement to push this 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 plan forward. So yesterday was a very busy day for these guys here. Yeah. Now you're born and raised in Brazil. You don't you don't yes. live in Rome. You live in Brazil. No, no, no. I'm just here this month in Rome to, to help the church. <laughs> yeah, to report. But I live in Brazil. Yes, yes, yes. To report. Yes. You know, it's, it's funny because when I was in, in Rome, what was that, three weeks ago, four weeks ago, everyone was saying, Bernardo, Bernardo Custer, Bernardo, you know Bernardo, you should have Bernardo on, you should talk to Bernardo. And I was, I was like, and I, I, I heard of you, uh, but since then I've watched some of your content and, and seen, you know, some, read some articles and all that and seen what you've done. And it, it's very impressive. Uh, maybe tell us a little bit uh, about who you are. You know, were you raised Catholic? Are you traditional Catholic? And then maybe, you know, tie that into how does Brazil relate intimately to Amazon, all things Amazonian? Because that's the talk yeah. of the day. Um, I was uh, baptized in Catholic Church in Curitiba, which is a city in the state of Paraná. I was born there and baptized in, I don't know, I had three months, I think in the church called St. Augustine. <laughs> and uh, yes, very significant. <laughs> then my parents unfortunately got divorced because of many reasons at that time. And my mother went to Lutheranism. So she became a Protestant. She was a Catholic. And then uh, after some years, during my the end of my adolescence, I, I became a, Protest, um, a communist, a Trotskyist. 
And uh, yeah, I loved to read Trotsky and to to think. I was I was never a, a kind of militant, you know, to go on the streets with signs and shouting. I always thought that was so stupid, and I, I just liked it to think and read. <laughs> So, but then after, to be, um, just to so, clarify, you were you were yeah. a, a intellectual book reading communist. Like, yes, not just, I, not just I, like yeah, a kid yeah. on a college campus who wears a Shea shirt, <laughs> right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Always reading, always yeah. reading. Yeah, but the wrong kind of books. But the good thing is that I know already where, what they're looking for and what are their plans, what they think. So this is good in some way that helped me. Uh, and then after some years, some, I, I became like a Bible follower. I, I didn't thought myself as a Protestant. I was the follower of Jesus, and I, I just read the Bible. Then I went to a Baptist church in Londrina, the city I, I live now. And then after some years, we had uh, this very huge theological discussion in our church about um, election and predestination because the, the, the pastor was changing some things. And he wanted to promote the the um, the, the predestination according the, to Calvin instead of that Arminius and John Wesley. And I had a lot of discussions with them. I started reading some John Wesley. Then I went to Jacobus Arminius, and I saw Jacobus Arminius, uh, Jacobus Arminius uh, interpreting uh, Roman nine uh, eleven and, and uh, Roman 9, uh, ten and eleven using the Church Fathers. From the early centuries, I said, "I'm not going to read this guy. I'm going to read the, who he's quoting." <laughs> so I went there and became Catholic. <laughs> that's, so I, I yeah, <laughs> that's a, you know, I I was a Protestant, and I I actually was on the other side of of Jacob Arminius. I actually liked Calvin as a young man, read Calvin's Institutes, and I remember mm -hmm. seeing Calvin quote Bernard of Clairvaux, and thought, "Who's this Bernard of Clairvaux?" And then he was also quoting all the time, Augustine. And I had a, a similar conviction as you. I said, I, I want to read what Augustine says, not what Calvin says, Augustine. And that was... Yes, and, and, and August, uh, Calvin has always said, Augustinus tutus noster est. Yes, <laughs> Augustine is all ours. Yeah. Yeah, but he's not. No, 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 completely <laughs> not. <laughs> and then I became a Catholic. And when I, I, I get into the church, I imagine I'm going to find, you know, that beautiful church I studied in the books. The the, the 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 church that I you know I dreamed of. I get in and I see Krautler, I see Barreto, I see Claudio Humes, I see all these guys in the church. They kidnapped the church I dream. So no, I'm going to fight them. <laughs> I'm going yes. to fight against them. That's that's what I'm doing since then. Since I don't know more than three years. Yeah. You know? Did you have when you came in? Were you were you puzzled or shocked at all by the liturgy? I mean, when I came in, I was I was expecting. Having been a Protestant and read Luther and Calvin and, and all these guys, I was expecting, you know, to see Tridentine liturgy. Mm -hmm. You know, I was hoping to see that, and instead, I just saw all this these felt banners and this sappy music. I don't, I don't know what the, what it's like on the ground in Brazil. Uh, I've never been to Brazil. I like, I love Brazil. I do Brazilian jiu jitsu. <laughs> so, yes, good. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm around Brazilians all week long. Mm -hmm. And I'm hearing Portuguese, even though I don't really understand it. I hear it all the time. So I have a I have a little bit of a Brazilian connection in a way, but I don't know what it's like there, but I know in America it's very it's very modernist. It's very pedestrian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That too. Yes, you, you know that we are now, I think, one of the countries that um are being very important in two ways. Mm -hmm. In a way, promoting this new Amazonian face of the church through this modernist and progressist and everything else. But in another way, we are having a big, big reborn, a renewal of the, um, the, re the, the real traditional of the church because we have so many, so many, and I have been to almost all Brazilian uh, most important city the next, the, the last year. For example, last year I did, uh, Taylor, I did 150 um, the trips giving conferences in Brazil last year. Wow. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So giving conferences about liberation theology, giving giving conferences, helping some small Catholic groups that are trying to promote the true tradition of the church and everything else. So I know a lot of what's going on in all Brazil, not only 
the most populated areas. But for example, I have been many times to Manaus, which is the biggest city in Amazon. I've been to the Northeast, the center of Brazil, the South, the extreme South near, Port, near Uruguay. And I, what I see is many, 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 many Catholic groups we call here Catholic centers, but it's a, it's uh, organized institutional groups that promote uh, courses. They are they are always um, trying also to uh, start some publisher to to publish books, and some of them have already uh, are already publishing. For example, for the first time, there is uh, a translation from Latin of the the moral theology of the Santo Fonso Maria de Ligorio. Yes. Wonderful. So, the, yeah, they already translated the, the two books. They are now in the third book, and they're going to do all of them. And wow. so we, they are doing, yes, a great work trying to renew the, the Catholic Brazilian culture because we, till some years ago, were uh, the, 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 the largest Catholic country in the world. So we have the, the, the largest college of, Episcop of bishops in the world. We have more than... Um, active, we have 208, but with the Maritas, we have almost 500. That's amazing. That's way more than America, I believe. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And so we were founded by Catholics. We were founded by Catholics, by Portuguese Catholics, that they, they wanted to evangelize us, not to just colonize us. No, they went here with the purpose of, colon of uh, evangelizing us. And uh, the beautiful thing is that uh, they were very succeeding their plan. Uh, it was just, you know, when the, the Brazilian Republic started, which is not so something so long ago in uh, 1889, when this, uh, this uh, new government started to, uh, you know, push away this uh, Catholic uh, culture. Um, and um, because our, our government, for example, the, the imperial government in Brazil, they were Catholics. The problem is that the emperor, the second, uh, the, the, uh, Peter II in Brazil, he was, he had some ties with the, the, the Freemason. Oh, okay. Yeah, yes, yes. Not so strong, but he had some contacts and some relation with them. And that in some way, somehow, um, uh, his, his this position of his um, kind of uh, forced him to not promote and to constrain the religious orders in Brazil. That was a problem, very big problem. And uh, what's the date again here for this? The Republic. It is uh, eighteen eighty nine. So the end of the 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 nineteenth century. But uh, yet, uh, Brazil remains a Catholic country. If you go from the, those very isolated areas in the, the center of the country, or I don't know, in the countryside, you'll see that you, you pick a lady with her rosary. There is a picture of, I don't know, Padre, uh, Father Pio of Petrucina. You'll see, for example, Jopo II. I don't know, but you'll see uh, Our Lady of Padecida, which is the, Our Lady of Brazil. Yeah, and they, you see, they have their devotions. They pray a lot. They go to church. And if you go to big cities too, you'll have, you'll see a big devotion. You'll see a lot of distortions, a lot of uh, changings. But you'll see that Brazil still remains a very Catholic, uh, a very Catholic country. But the problem is that we have forget, uh, we have forgot our, ru our, our roots. So the, the true Catholicism is that is that is changing so fast. I was talking today with Roberto de Matei, uh, and we were talking about this. Yeah, <laughs> I love Roberto de Matei. I want to be Roberto de Matei for Halloween. <laughs> I want to be that's him when good, I grow up. I love Roberto. That's a de good Mattei. costume. <laughs> when I was in Rome, I just did everything I could to hang out with Roberto de Matei. Yeah, he's just a wonderful man. Very simple, but very no, he's a genius. Yeah. And uh, we were talking, yeah, we were talking about this fast changings and deep changings that are happening now. Since the Vatican II, uh, uh, things got so strong, so deep. We know the changes were before, but uh, through that, I don't know, the, the, the doors of hell were open or the smoke of Satan, as Paul the Sixth said, enter into the church. So this is the Pope himself who ended, you know, who was the responsible for the conclusion of the, of the council saying, Oh my God, everything went wrong. <laughs>
And in Brazil too, and Brazilians, as you you, you announced, the Brazilians play a very important role during the Vatican too for both sides. That's important. People know about Castro de Ma Castro Meyer, but they don't know about some of the liberal things that came from Brazil in the Vatican too. Can, can yeah. you explain that? Because that's a news to a lot of people. Yeah, for example, as today, we have, uh, like, I don't know, two, two weeks ago, the pact, the catacomb pact that mm -hmm. happened on the, the tw Sunday the 20th, if I'm not mistaken. It was the renewal of the pact that happened on 16th November uh, 65, at the end of the Vatican II. And um, who led those bishops then in 65? Who was the responsible for it? It was a Brazilian bishop from the Northeast region called Elder Camara. He's known till now, to today, as the Red Archbishop because mm -hmm. he was so communist. But the problem of his, I think, is not that he was a communist because he was uh, open, um, he was openly pro um contraceptive he was openly because you know when uh, Paul the sixth published humane vitae he was so mad about it. he was crazy about it. he wrote letters he went to france to give conferences against it like for example those bishops from minnesota and those priests from minnesota in the united states also got so um mad with uh, Paul the sixth but for example pro uh, contraception, pro-divorce. He was, um, I think he was also something, uh, uh, wanted something like this diaconesis, this, this female di diaconate. Um, and uh, so he had so many, uh, so many liberal positions for that time that are still so liberal and so radical today. Uh, and they're getting, they're trying to get him be to, to, to become a saint. He's already a servant of God here. Yeah, what? he is. Yes, right yes, now. Yes, 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 yes. Unfortunately, yes. Um, we are organizing a group to start to promote all this. Uh, his his true biography because he has a, a big history, and this is a true history. Helping the poor, he built some buildings. He helped the poor here and there, but. You cannot canonize a man like this, no. you know, who was pro-contraceptive, pro-divorce, who was openly communist, who, you know, conducted all those 500 bishops during the Vatican II to sign the catacomb pacts for um, mainly, you know, they were saying we have this preferential option for the poor, which meant uh, at the time, and this means now, we are going to read the documents of the Vatican II, you know, the 16 documents, we are going to read them as we want. And we are going to interpret it as we want. We are going to give our vision. We are going to promote the Marxist uh, interpretation and sociological interpretation. Um, you know, we are going to read everything in, in, that, in that line. We are not going to respect the church. We are going to follow our heads. We are going to be the our popes <laughs> and uh, it was him who led those all those bishops this is this his this story is well uh, written in roberto de Mattei books a uh, book of about the the vatican II. is there it's all there so he was one of the leaders who uh, yes he's going to show the book oh yes perfect <laughs> i just i just keep it next to me it makes me feel good does, this is such, <laughs> this is, if you guys want to read, I've said this before on this channel, if you're looking for the definitive history of Vatican II, look no further than Roberto de Matei's book. This is the yeah. one. This is it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, if you need he, one he, book, this, this is it. Yeah, this book is, is just, uh, as the as Frenchmen called, uh, Tour de Force, which means, yes. you know, this. And so uh, Elder Camera played a major role. And this is wonderful to know this, the, to know the history is to not be scary of, to be, is not be scared of the present because, for example, when they went there at the, the catacombs of Santa Domitila and I was there, I was not invited, but I went there <laughs> and they, oh my God, they were mad at me um, because we uh, filmed all of them and we know everybody mm -hmm. who was there. 
And uh, there were also some media there, uh, media from Brazil, media from Germany, I think also from the US, I, I just have to check. But they have the stole, they use the stole of Elder Camera. Uh. They use the same, and they call it a relic. And they said, and Humes, who, Don Claudio Humes, Cardinal Humes, who presided the, 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 the mass, he said, I'm going to give this to its proper owner and gave it, it to Krautler, to oh. Bishop during the mass. Oh, now, we so Bishop Krautler is, he's the one who was in the Amazonian, he's, he's Austrian, correct? He was in the Amazon, he's the one who said he hasn't baptized anyone and will not. Yeah, yeah, he said that in a, according to a testimony of his friend in um, in a Aust, um, Austrian uh, journal, yes, for, for the church. Yeah, yeah, he and, said and, that. And he, he was, never did. He's been the one that's been all over the Amazonian synod. He's sort of the expert speaking for for all this. And you put up a tweet where he was on the street holding hands with a young lady. He, this is the bishop who wants married priests, and here he is with a, a young lady. I mean, were you able yeah. to, to identify what was going on here? I mean, is this is this really him? Yeah, it's. A, <laughs> I was joking with a friend today. It's a fresco vos probatus. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, Episcopus we don't probatus. Yeah, Episcopus probatus. Yes, we know that is him. But um, a friend of mine went personally and asked him. So Bishop Crowley. Is uh, who is that woman you were, you know, holding hands going around Vatican? You know, it, it was not, you know, the closed street, they were at a restaurant, it was opening just near the Vatican, right? So he's not afraid, he's shameless. And this friend of mine asked him and said, Who is the lady? He said, She's my sister. Oh. And uh, and then he said, Okay, I have a sister too, and her name is. I don't know, Joanna. And what's your, your sister's name? And he said, um, you know, I have to go. Mm, okay. Okay. So it wasn't her sister. Mm -hmm. It wasn't her sister. So uh, we know that he has a very close uh, friend from uh, a Brazilian um, media outlet. But we don't know if ha they have something else. We might infer that. But as he is the, 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 the strongest and most preeminent um, um, promoter of the Viri Probati, maybe they have something. I don't know. But this is, this is very indicative of, you know, we have a bishop, an emeritus bishop, going around Rome near the Vatican, holding hands with a young lady. So, and he is promoting Viri Probati. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is something. I think that they're, you know, this is a message for me. They're saying, I don't know, we don't care what you think. We're going to yeah. do it the same. Yeah. Yeah. And what strikes me is, I mean, this is this is a problem, but the, wor the, the problem that's much more worse is that you would not baptize people. You know, the, the, yeah. the gentleman who threw the Pachamamas into the Tiber River, in their statement, they said, one of the reasons we did this is because a certain people, the Amazonian people, are not being given sacramental baptism which is the way to heaven that was one of the reasons uh for this this act of destroying the idols and i mean this is a huge story that a lot of people aren't discussing and that is that the these amazonian people and I, i'd like you to for you to explain us what we are talking about when we're referring to these amazonian people because i'm I've read about it, and I, I've seen some research, and the TFP has done a lot of things, but I, I, we need to hear more about what this is. These people, you know, we're just dialoguing with them and putting an Amazonian face in the church, but and we're talking about how they need married priests and women leadership, but if they're not baptized, they can't receive any sacraments at all. It's a complete farce. Yeah. Um, do you know, this is very, this is ridiculous, because, for mm -hmm. example, Krautla says, I never baptize an, an indigenous, and I'm not going to do it. So what is, what is his message? In one way, he thinks like a Jesuit, you know, like the, the Orwell double thinking. <laughs> he says, um, uh, I never baptize an indigenous, and I'm going, not going to do it. And another side, he says, we need a viriprobati because people need the sacrament of the uh, Eucharistic. You are a liar because you cannot give them the 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 uh, eucharistic if you do not baptize them 
So you have some hidden agenda. Yes. What is your hidden agenda? You have you are an open eco eco socialist, and you are trying to push your agenda through the church. You are trying to use the church as Gramsci and as Antonio Gramsci told us he would do, and you are following him. Yeah. That's he's, your agenda. He's he's not Brazilian. He's from Austria. <laughs> yeah, as all Indian theologians are, they say this is indigenous theology. This is India theology. I said, okay, who's um, uh, I don't know um, how do you say this shaman? Yeah, yeah. What's Brazilian uh, in uh, Amazonian shaman is it's writing. Where are the books? Yes. And you will have only books like Heutler, Heutler, blah blah. It's only Germans, right? <laughs> it's like liberation theology. It's all produced in Europe. Yeah. All produced in Europe. It's it's preposterous. So what we are talking about when we talk about Amazon, we are talking about 80% of people who live in Amazon. It's like, I don't know, it's 30, 30 million people who live in the Panamazonic region. All of them lives in uh, urban areas. All of them. Almost all of them. And the 20 or 15% who doesn't, they live in small tribes uh, that do not talk to each other. And when they talk, Almost um, all the times they fight and they yes. kill each other. For example, the Incas in the middle, uh, the middle Andean, Indian region there in the north of Peru, um, they captured all. They, they actually they built big cities. The Incas, they built big cities, and then they used their force and their army to capture the small and weak tribes to use them as sacrifice to the sun god or to the Inti, they would call it. So, uh, and uh, I went to Machu Picchu, I know that region very well, and uh, they killed, or actually they used to kill each year in the, the, the sun feast day, they killed 10,000 virgins. So is this ancestral wisdom? No. For example, when we think about Brazilian first appointed bishop, Bishop Sardinia, Bishop Sardinia came to Brazil in July, June, June 1556, he came to Brazil. His ship, his ship, uh, ship sank near the coast when he, you know, very thankful to God, he arrived at the coast. The Indians killed him and ate him. The first yes. bishop. Yes, the first bishop appointed to Brazil from Why Portugal. Why don't we hear this? Why don't we hear this? Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. <laughs> they never talk about this. Mm -hmm. They never talk about uh, the, the infanticide that the Indians do. Still today in Brazil, there are more than 20 tribes who do, who do it. They kill it because they are uh, their sons of or daughters of a single mother, because they have some physical or psychological uh, problem, or because they are twins. So if, for example, are born twins. The second who were born, the, uh, for, uh, was born, who is the youngest, it's killed because they say there's something from a evil spirit. I don't know. And then we, you read uh, the final document of the Senate that we have to preserve and respect and dialogue with their culture. No. What we had, for example, in Brazilian Amazonian uh, evangelization, evangelization in, the, uh, in the beginning of the, the end of the 16th century, for example, with um, so many Portuguese priests, Franciscans and Dominicans, and then Jesuits, uh, they evangelized those people. They walked uh, uh, mile after mile with an altar, you know, hanging here. When they found an Indian, they started to evangelize them. We had a priest, a Brazilian priest called Father Anchieta, he created a dictionary of uh, for the language Guarani, so they had a missile in, translated into their land, their language, so they could understand the mass. So they they helped him, and all the Amazonian became Catholic it, for for hundred years. The Amazon was Catholic, but when those modernists and when those liberal theologians, liberation theology, started or to destroy the divinity of Christ and the beauty of the mass, when they destroy the rite, the liturgy, everything else, when they empty all the monasteries, they ended the, voca the vocations because uh, there is nothing different be between um, a priest and a layman, when they put all those things into the church and trying to 
make all the Christians and Catholics to become, I don't know, some political militant or something, you now you do not have Jesus anymore in the Amazon. And so they complain they don't do not have priests, they complain they do not have this and that, and they say the solution now is to ordain married uh, priests, is now men is like to ordain to have some uh, female diaconess is, and something. No, we have to return to the point we 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 uh, we did something wrong, and the point is that the you know Pius the tenth said that you know when you read the Pashanti, it's all there. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's it's prophetic then, and so um, these guys do not want to evangelize because also again the final document of the synod says that they do not want anything to do with proselytism. They're using this word in a in a bad sense, but proselytism, if you go to the dictionary, is just, you know, to convert somebody mm -hmm. to your religion. Yeah. It's just to change side. Proselytize. That proselytize. Yes. So that's what the church has been doing in two thousand years. <laughs> that's how we build and save all people that, you know, turned into mm -hmm. Christ. And these people are saying, No, we have to dialogue, to put yourself in dialogues and to be them and to build our culture with them. We have, you know, to go together, give hands and Pachamama, Pachamama. <laughs> That's what they Let, want. <laughs> let's talk about Pachamama because, you know, <laughs> this this became the, the image and the icon of the Amazonian Synod. We saw them on that opening Friday. Well, actually, before it actually opened, the Friday before everything opened. And at first, you know, there were people saying, oh, this is just uh, Elizabeth and Our Lady having a little visitation on the blankets in the Vatican Garden. And then we were told, no, they're not Mary. Uh, th these are um, Our Lady of the Amazon. And then we were told, no, it's fertility and Mother Earth. And then Pope Francis says, no, this is Pachamama. But there is an Our Lady of Amazon devotion that's i think very old very pious and very good uh, i'm gonna put up i have a picture of of this uh hopefully i gather the right one it looks right to me uh this is our lady of the amazon also called our lady of nazareth do i have this right bernardo yes 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 that's the name and 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 what is the story why is there a devotion in the amazon region to this true image of our lady our lady of nazareth yeah, this is, I, I just want to, to make clear. So Brazil has 64% of the Amazon, of the Pan-Amazon, they of call it, it. Right. Most of it. So most of it is ours. Uh, and most of the population is also in Brazil. So, uh, so to speak, the Amazon is well, Brazilian. And then the others, uh, the countries divide the region. So it's Brazil. And uh, the biggest devotion is concentrated in Manaus, which is the biggest, the largest city, and Belém, which is Bethlehem, you know, in Portuguese. Yes. And this city, Belém, uh, they have this so strong, so beautiful devotion to Our Lady of Nazareth. Nazareth. And just now, this this last Sunday, this this Sunday, this twenty uh, seventh Sunday, uh, it ended this the I don't know how how to to say this in English. It's the Sirio, Sirium. Um, um, it's uh, it's a devotion to her that some pilgrims walk like I don't know two hundred kilometers on foot. Wow! To, yeah, to make a penitence, you know, Is and to okay? make this penance. act, yeah, penitence to Our Lady, and they walk. And this, I uh, I could show you some pictures, but here I can't. But uh, it uh, it's it changes all the cities, all the things, all the city, you know, become. Uh, turns into a devotional uh, period to 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 our to our lady. It this is the true lady of his, of of, our, of Nazareth. For example, there is this good and incredible Brazilian bishop who also was calling me right now. And so when I end this, I have to call him. <laughs> He's an emeritus bishop uh, of Marajó, which is a large a large uh, island in in Amazonia. 
And they have, uh, this island is like, uh, there is a big island and another, I don't know, 2,000 small island um, uh, around it. And um, he was a bishop there. He's a Spanish, but he's in Brazil, I don't know, more than uh, 40 years. And he gave this amazing homily uh, the next, uh, the, the, the last Sunday saying, who is worshiping, Pachamama is worshiping the devil. He said explicitly like this, this is a quote. And then he said, the true lady of Amazon is the lady of Our Lady of Nazareth. And who adores Our Lady and uh, is not, you know, seeing Our Lady of Nazareth, which is uh, the, the true devotion for more than 300 years, it, it, it's not in the Catholic tradition. Yes. And he said, I, 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 I pay my respects to the Pope and to the Church. I'm in union with the Church, but... Yeah, in the Vatican, they sinned against the first commandment. He said that. Idolatry. And uh, that's idolatry, yes. Yeah, I mean, if, you can't see it, Bernardo, but on the screen I have the image of, the Brazilian image of Our Lady of Nazareth. It's, it looks like the Blessed Mother and, and, Our La and the baby Jesus. Yes, yes, like yes, the yes. One, so the people who lived in Nazareth, you know, the Mother of God and the Son of God. It, but when you look at idea. a Pachamama... <laughs> And you say, "Oh, this is this is Our Lady of Na of of Amazon." It's a lie. Yeah. yeah, and you see the problem also that the the bishop uh, Tom uh, Bishop Ascona pointed out is that our uh, this Pachamama, this idol, is naked. Yes, how can never this be our lady? never in Christian tr tradition or lady was depicted or I don't know may, uh, naked. This is. You know, this is uh, to to mock her. It's you know, bad. this is yeah. They're trying, and Kreitler said today in a Brazilian uh, in a Brazilian uh, journal in a Brazilian paper, he said that in an interview, he said that uh, they want to promote the pa pa Pachamama devotion now. So they created a fake devotion, yes. and now they're they're saying this is a true devotion. But now they're going to promote it. You know, this is this is the same thing that is going to happen with this Amazonian right, because if you look, for example, or for uh, um, if you look to the, for example, the twenty-two or twenty-three other uh, different rights that the Catholic Church has, all of them trace back to the first centuries of the Church, all of them, yes. all of them. But this Amazonian right is going to come out of nothing, ex nihilo. Yeah. So it's it's going to pop out from some crazy eco-socialist heads that are not concerned about the sacraments. Yeah. So what is going to happen? They are going to change everything. Instead of Jesus, we are going to have, I don't know, instead of Our Lady, we are going to have the Pachamama. Instead of wine, we are going to have, I don't know, some Amazonian juice. Instead of bread, we are going to have tapioca, which is like a bread from Amazon. We instead, what what is going to happen? So we are trying to enculturate ourselves, but instead we are going to send these people into hell. Yes, we are trying to save the mother Earth, but we are not saving our brother men. Yes, that's what's all about at the end. Yeah, it, it is blasphemous, it's sacrilegious, it's ugly, it's disgusting, it's against the first commandment that this naked idol, and honestly, if you if you say this is Our Lady, which they've all backed off on, then that means that the red colored part in her uterus would be our Lord Jesus Christ, which I don't like either. But the tradition of the church, I mean, you, if, for everyone looking on the screen, you look at Our Lady of Nazareth, this is the Blessed Mother, she's crowned. She's clothed. She has dignity. She's holding the logos, the second person yes. in Trinity incarnate. He's crowned. Yeah, she yeah. has a, a majestic robe on, a cope. She has angels at her feet. She's on a cloud. There's a throne. This is what we see in in Scripture. You know, this is the Queen Mother of Israel. This is the Lady clothed in the sun in the Apocalypse, chapter twelve. Yeah, you might even say, Bernardo, this is Our Lady who lived in Nazareth, hence the name, Our Lady of Nazareth. Yeah, and I, I didn't explain that, but the, um, 
the stories goes way back to uh, Saint Joseph, our Lady's spouse. He, he, he you know, this, according to tradition, it was Saint Joseph himself who did a statue of uh, of uh, his uh, wife, and then it was later uh, painted, gave color by Saint Lucas, Saint Luke, the evangelist, and then the tradition said they they. Uh, this statue goes here and there until it ended in, uh, um, I think it was Spain, and then Spain to Portugal and Portugal to Brazil. So it's, it's so strong for them because it goes, uh, according to tradition, way back to St. Joseph. So this is very strong. We are connected to the Holy Land in Jerusalem. We are connected to Portugal or a motherland, so to speak, because they colonized and evangelized us. And uh, this is this is the true Lady of Amazon, and uh, there is of course another uh, de devotion that is not so well spread there, which is Our Lady of Amazon. There is also a devotion, but she's holding the baby. Mm -hmm. She's not pregnant. She's not naked. She has dark dark hair. She's skinny and very you know she she has this beautiful look. So th it's not her, uh, this this Pachamama. This Pachamama is an idol, a fake, mm. and the Vatican media, the Vatican uh, press, the, for example, Paolo Ruffini, he was aggressive defending the idea that all symbolized life. No, right. that may symbolize life in his head, but if you look to Pachamama tradition and the Pope himself acknowledged that it was Pachamama, it was the goddess of the blood, yes. of blood. Sacrifice. As we had for as yes, oh, yes, sacrifice. As we had uh, blood money from human sacrifice, a Ford Foundation funding the base organizations of the saint that we have now uh, to adore this uh, symbol of sacrifice, which is Pachamama. Yes. That's very interesting because Pachamama always re requires blood. And when they signed the Catacomb Pact, they took a, a piece of tissue and they marked with their finger with a red ink. I don't know if that was blood. They said it was Urukum, which is an Amazonian ink, but nobody knows. I wasn't there inside. I was outside. But they marked with blood. This you know, looks like uh, the, the symbol of uh, a blood pack. This must be said because uh, as a Brazilian philosopher, Mario Ferreira dos Santos, he, al he always said that a symbol is always uh, an intentional sign. Nobody puts that or, you know, organizes that just, you know, by chance. Yeah. It was well thought. Yeah. Yeah. Now, a, a lot of us have questions on the Pachamama idol that we saw in uh, Santa Maria Transplantina and also in the Vatican and on the dais there uh, during the proceedings. Bernardo, is this something that I could go to a, a Brazilian street market and buy this same image or was this image made custom? Uh, I have seen on the internet other images of Pachamama in d in different poses. I have seen the one on the knees, and I've and they all seem to be somewhat naked. So there's a common theme there. But I'm just curious: is is this something I could just buy off the street for for a little bit of money, or are these customized for the the synod? No, they were. I think they were customized for the synod because, for okay. example, if you go to the biggest Brazilian cities in Amazon, Belém. And Manaus, I never saw that. And I went there many okay. times, so more than two times. So, And I, I never said I never saw that. For example, there is a common pattern when you, you look at the, 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 the depicting of the Pachamama. They, it's always a very um, it's naked woman. She has uh, long hairs, the dark hairs. She has always a very big, big breasts yes. and always... Almost always, all the time, she's pregnant. Yes, and she um, sometimes she's fat, you know, symbolizing fertility, like the goddess Venus, the famous statue, you know, like the goddess Venus. And um, she has something also connected with nature. She is be she's inside a mountain, or she is upon something. So she has something connected, like rooted in the ground, right. you know. But in, in Our Lady of Nazareth, there is there is nothing of that on her. Nothing. She's not even pregnant. 
Yeah. So you cannot buy that on a market in Manaus. Even the Indians there, you know, I, I talked to my friends in, in Manaus during the Senate, and they said, what is that? <laughs> we never saw that. Okay. They're saying the Amazonians, they have this devotion to Pachamama. No, we don't. We adore our, our Lady of Nazareth. <laughs> adore. We, uh, we, we Vener uh, venerate. Vener yes. Yeah, venerate. Our Lady of, of of Nazareth. This is preposterous. This is outrageous. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at some of these pictures, and, and it looks like in most of them she's rooted into a mountain or yeah. into the earth, mm -hmm. uh, either in her clothing or her hair. Her hair is becoming waterfalls. Mm -hmm. You know, as she's coming emerging out of a mountain and all that. So, I mean, and, yeah. and Pachamama means it means it can be translated as Mother Earth or as Mother Age. Right. Does, I mean, is it similar to the Latin seculum, which can mean like a age or a world or epic? I mean, how does it how does it relate to Earth? Is Mother Earth a direct translation? Yeah, yeah. When I when I was in Peru, this is the this language is Quechua, which is spoken is still today in Peru. And uh, for example, uh, uh, the Mother Earth is translated as Pachamama. It's, I think it's a uh, uh, correct translation, and uh, the 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 Inca uh, that was the emperor. Inca is a title like Caesar, for example, or Xar. So the Inca was called also as Pachacuti, which means um, the the mother, the the father of it's uh, the uh, father of son. You know, father of the son. He was the the owner, the proper. You know, he was the god's son. Son, not son, <laughs> and uh, sacrifices uh, were were made to him too. So, um, yeah, and then and yeah. then the other thing that a lot of people have a question on is this nasty image of a woman nursing. Uh, we think it's a piglet. Uh, can you can you speak to that? I don't know. I never saw that image before, but I think it's a Brazilian Indian tribe. So I uh, I think that was just to I don't know because. That that image was uh, in a bigger sign that was that was written just above it. Everything is interconnected. Yes. So I I think I, you know I don't know I'm trying to interpret it, but I think they were saying that we are so connected to the animals that 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 uh, a man breastfeeding an animal like that it's normal and acceptable to put even into a church. Yeah, where children co can come and pray. Yeah, so uh, this is um, this images and this this um, so strong uh, pictures that they put there, they cause a psychological effect in us because when you look at that, you just you you, you became a statue. You have no reactions. You're just shocked, and that was made to shock us and to block all our reactions. But the first reaction, I think. It should be to take that poster or that sign and put them out. Yes. Also with the Pachamamas. That, uh, they, I was told that the, the guys that threw the Pachamama into the river were Austrian. I think they're right. I think they're right. My God, they're right. <laughs> yes. Because, you know, it, it's, uh, you know, it was the, the right thing to do. What did you think when you, when you first heard or saw the video of the Pachamamas being throw it into the Tiber River. I thought the first time, the first thing, thing I said here to, to the guys that were working with me, I said, Santo Subito. <laughs> <laughs> make, make them the saint quickly, right? Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, I mean, they stand yeah, in a because... long line of saints with Elijah the prophet, Moses, who destroyed the golden calf, Saint Benedict, who destroyed the idol of Apollo, Boniface, who chopped down the sacred oak. Uh, I think there was St. Vigilius, who also threw an idol into the river. Yeah. We Catholics must destroy idolatry, especially if it's inside the Catholic Church, at the altar. Yeah. Yeah. It's an abomination. Yeah. Do you think St. Peter should be reconsecrated? Probably yes, probably yes, because the thing that, that worried me the most is because I was... Rewatching the movie, the 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 the, the um, broadcasting of the Vatican News, of the the first the opening mass of the synod, and 
they did that bizarre procession with the the Pope just, you know, in front of them, conducted them. And then they made that big circle, you know, in front of the altar. Mm -hmm. And they put the, the, um, the, the boat, the small boat, you know, with the Pachamama just in front of the altar. Well, and who, Peter. That's it. If no one, uh, if you, if one, for example, you Taylor, you know that the, the Saint Peter's Basilica. If you go there and you see the the place the boat was standing is just above Saint Peter's tomb, yeah. and we call the church the the ship or you know the boat of Saint Peter, and there was the boat of Pachamama just above him. That is mocking. It is mocking. That is mocking, and. Um, for example, at the at the, the 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 closing mass of the synod, they didn't bring Pachamama, but they brought something. They brought a, a vase of uh, with a plant. An indigenous uh, an ind indigenous uh, woman took this indigenous vase with uh, earth and some plant, Amazonian plant. She gave during the offering. She gave to the the Pope. He took it. And he said to his assistants, he said, uh, put it uh, upon the altar. And he put the, the, the vase upon the altar, Taylor. I know. And, yeah, it's the mother earth. Earth, earth. And that vase was full of earth. So for them, it doesn't matter if it's an idol of, uh, made of wood or if, if it, it's a vase full of earth. Because to them, everything is interconnected. So it's a symbol, and we don't know if that vase was consecrated to I don't know who, but uh, the Pope asked to put it in, upon the altar. So as far as I know, liturgically, you cannot put everything you want upon the altar. <laughs> it's not the, you know, the table of your house, your house mm -hmm. table. So it's not to, you know, it's the altar of the sacrifice. This is This is something I think we should... Think more about it. Also, Transpontina must be reconsecrated ten times and exorcised. Also, you know another yeah. thing. You know, I put on the screen uh, just now so people can see it. You can see uh, Francis is receiving the potted plant, uh, which is supposed to be Mother Earth. Uh, it's, it's Earth. You know, with the growth, they put it on the altar. Uh, so you can see on the screen, and then you can also see on the screen is the boat. Uh, you can see they're in St. Peter's. You can see the chair of the altar behind them. They're right in front of the Baldacchino. Just behind where Pope Francis is standing in this image is the tomb of St. Peter. So they're right there. As you mentioned, the Catholic Church is the ship of Peter. It's the bark of Peter. But you know what's interesting, Bernardo? If you blow this picture up, I'm going to do it right now for everybody watching. On the boat, <clears throat> it says Papa Francisco. Mm. If you look on it, if you if you if you blow it up, that's who's on the boat. So it's almost like they're saying there's the bark of Peter, the ship of Peter, and there's the ship of Francis, and the ship of Francis has who in it, the Pachamama, mm -hmm. the idol. Mm -hmm. It's right there for the whole world to see. It's very offensive. Yeah. And then you've got the yeah, the, so the this... earth, the the planet of Earth, and as you said, you can't just put everything on the altar and. If you go back to Santa Maria Transpatina, they're putting, maybe you can speak to this, they're putting these uh, pictures or icons of liberation theologians and their martyrs and their on the altar. There's pictures of people on these mm -hmm. on the altar at Transpatina. Mm -hmm. You can only put images of people on altars if they're saints. That's why we say we raise them to the altars, right? Who are some of these people that we saw on? There's like a woman, it looks like a nun, but she's not wearing a veil. I heard she was killed. No. And then there's yeah, also it's... this guy named, I, I'm going to slaughter the name. It's Akuru or Kura. Um, what is his name? He's he's depicted a lot at the Amazonian city. He wears a. No, uh, it's uh, Ezekiel Rami. Z is it Zukuru or Kuru? Zukuru, I, don't, I, 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 don't, I don't know his history. It's okay. Shukuru. Shukuru, yes. Shukuru. Uh, I don't know his history, but I know three of them who were. Uh, I know Chico Mendes, which is Francis, Francis Mendes. I know Ezekiel Ramin and Doris Stang. Doris Stang and Ezekiel Ramin were killed during an invasion of a, of, a, of a farm in Brazil. They were part of this radical movement 
that f that fought for fight still today for you know the um, the um, to to distribute the lands in Brazil rightly you know according to the needs and then they invaded you know they entered in the, into this farm and they got killed because they invaded private property so it's like in the US if you just you know I get in, into your garden Taylor say oh this is mine you're going to shot me <laughs> you're going to shoot me especially so, in Texas that's going to happen in Texas especially in Texas yes maybe in Virginia too yeah. so <laughs> and uh, the other one the third one Chico Mendes he was a radical communist uh, and so um, all those martyrs of them were are not martyrs like the saints. They are martyrs, yes, but for them, not for the church. For the church they are trying to build, yes, they are martyrs for them, according to them. But for us, for the church, for the tradition, though they're not, they're just um, militants, political uh, socialist militants. It's always that. This is this is this is very. This is bizarre because uh, the, the same with the, the potted earth, the potted plant that they put it into the altar, uh, Marshall. There's very interesting. When the, when that guy picked up the, the Pachamamas and, and threw it in the river, they were without Pachamamas. And do you know what they did in, in Via Transpontina, the church? They put the, the, the bark there, the, the, the ship, the, the small the, the bark, and in the place of the Pachamama, they put it what? They put a vase. With what in it? With a plant. Ah, okay. So, so this, because it's the Mother Earth. This is so the new... The, you know what? If they hadn't been so silly and stupid, they would have done that from the beginning and we probably wouldn't have caught on so quick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, maybe. <laughs> but I think they paid a lot for that artist who crafts the Pachimama. So yes. they had to show. <laughs> yes. And then they yeah. they say they, they recovered the, the Pachamamas. Do you think that's true or not? Uh, I doubt that. Sorry. I doubt that. Yeah. I doubt that the Carabinieri, which is like the Federals here, would spend public money, you know, running through the <laughs> the, the, the Tiber, you know, <laughs> yeah. just looking for some Pachamamas. This is ridiculous. I think they didn't find because the, the, the river goes fast. It's, you it's know. It's very fast. Yeah, I think they just crafted or picked up, or I don't know if they had more pachamamas. I don't know, right? But yeah. I'm sure they didn't. They didn't fish some pachamamas. Yeah, because if if you watch yeah. the video, one of the pachamamas ended up on the foot of the bridge. It didn't quite make it to the water. So they, I they, I went there. It's still there. It's still there. Yes. Right now, I have the picture. <laughs> so, yes, it's still there. I went there personally. And if they so that's not one of the ones that they retrieved then. No, because they needed a boat. Yes. Uh, but yeah, let me show you. I okay. have here. So on as of October 31st, you're saying that one of those pots, we shouldn't even. There it is. Oh, here. I'm at the bridge. <laughs> yeah, there you are. Yeah. That's what happened. So, How about that? Yeah. It's not that Pachamama. <laughs> yes. Because it's still there. Right. Yeah. That one's still there. I'm surprised no one's gotten gone to get it. It's quite the souvenir. I mean, I wouldn't want that's it. That's why want... that, that's why I didn't publish the photo the, the yeah. photograph. Well now we're because they knows. would you know yeah. Yeah. But people don't get it. It's an idol. You don't want idols. <laughs> demons. That, if you want demons, I, that's how you get demons. Yeah, I just needed a long pole, you know, just to <laughs> chup, finish the job. <laughs> <To knock it. laughs> yeah, maybe if you do go out there, someone I mean, the Tiber River is pretty nasty, so you're going to want scuba gear. Uh, yeah. And you just go over there and, and knock it in. Yeah, and uh, protect yourself with some holy water, please. There you go. And yeah, and, and wash your hands of holy water when you're done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, maybe we could also touch before, before we conclude on liberation theology, because you've done a lot of work on that. I think, aren't you making a film about that? You are. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So tell us about the film and then... And then you know, I, I did a liberation theology show a couple of weeks back, but I think it'd be better for, for someone from Brazil, Ground Zero, telling us <laughs> where did it briefly what it is, where it came from, and, and why is this such a game changer for it it seemed, you know, ten years ago, oh, that's just a South American problem. And now we've realized no, it's an infiltration of the whole church. Yeah. Yeah. It was um encapsulated for so many years in Brazil, but it was just getting forced and preparing itself to be relaunched into the world because it, it was born actually in Europe 
in France and, and Germany and Belgium, actually. And then they used Brazil as an excuse. Brazil and Chile and El Salvador and Nicaragua, but main, mostly, um, mostly Brazil was used because of its social movement. So the movie I'm, I'm making, I'm just almost finishing. We are just uh, we are editing the movie now. Uh, it's uh, almost two hours documentary about liberation theology. We went to more than five, six countries to interview people. We interviewed, uh, for example, Roberto de Matei. We interviewed many uh, important researchers or people that were part of this movement. We, we interviewed um, a cardinal that was cor courageous enough to give an interview to a movement like this, but as he is emeritus, he's, you know, free to go. <laughs> so... Uh, we went to the U.S., we went to many countries, and um, we are trying to tell a different version of this of the, the story of liberation theology, because the version that is known, for example, if you read uh, the text of Benedict XVI <coughs> about the liberation theology, that text that he published in 84, if I'm not mistaken, he says there that it is uh, a fruit of... Uh, um, I don't know, a misleading interpretation of Vatican II. There are some uh, sociolo sociological problems, and there were, according to him, some ecclesiastical tensions at the time. But I think that analyzing things just in, um, in terms of ideas is not the, the proper way to think this, because um, as they admit that they use the, mar the social Marxist sciences to analyze the, the the reality, for example, as Gustavo Gutierrez, when you read his book, it's just, you know, whew, my God, it's Marxist just, you know, with some drops of holy water. <laughs> That's what he tries to do. And he uses a lot of Johann Baptist Metz and uh, Karl Hanna, which are, for, so to speak, the grandfathers of the liberation theology. Right. And um, But they use the Marxist framework or world worldview so to speak and as they use marxist you have to think as, as a marxist think and marxists do not believe in the truth uh gustavo gutierrez says in his book that the liberation theology is a critical reflection upon a political and existing practice so did he not he didn't create the liberation theology. He, as a good Marxist, do not believe in truth. So he is not like, for example, I'm going to, you know, quote, for example, St. Thomas Aquinas that says we need to contemplate before everything. Or uh, as Chesterton says in, a, in his funny way, he says that the shortest way to practice is a good theory. <laughs> so, um, no, they need a good political practice that goes tor towards uh, their revolution. And they, for example, um, Gustavo Gutierrez, he saw some Christians in the 60s, in the 50s in Brazil, mostly in the 50s, doing revolution through the culture, in universities, um, in the churches. They were, for example, guerrillas in Brazil, um, armed guerrillas. We had all this growing strong social movement that was feeded by communists that arrived in Brazil in 1922. And um, they looked at that movement and said, okay, now we have our political praxis upon which I can reflect critically and build the theology to put, the, put, to put this kind of re revolutionary practice into the church and then... Once that is, is, you know, accommodated within the church and has created its roots, it's going to force the church and use the church as a mean toward the revolution. So that's how a Marxist thinks. They do not believe the truth. So that's why the uh, liberation theology has changed so much. If you read, for example, the Catacomb Pact in the, uh, from 65, they say, we, do, we deny property. We deny our excellency names or eminence names. Uh, we denied um, any money, we denied our palaces and everything else. The pact that they renew the last um, 20, they didn't deny private property. Actually, Humes went in his private car away from the... <laughs> he used his private car. 
they said we are not going to use plastics. So uh, uh, after the pact, all of them were uh, uh, drinking coffee in, in plastic cups. So <laughs> that's how hard and incredible, uh, yeah, and coherent they are. But we cannot underestimate them. They're very intelligent and they have money. That's the problem. They have help now from the German uh, uh, com yeah. uh, bishops' conference. That's a great problem. For example, with Cardinal Marx. Yes. So the name is so strong. <laughs> the name is Which, revealing. <laughs> the yeah, the name is fate. So um, the liberation theology has an importance because uh, as Marxism, they can change all the time. For example, if you take the original thesis of Marx and what Lenin proposed, they're uh, diametrically opposed. And if you take, for example, what Lenin proposed and goes to what, for example, the School of Frank Frankfurt believed, it um, it's another time and 120, uh, 180 degrees. You know, it changes a lot. So, what are their purpose? Is just to revolution. And what means revolution? It's a complete change in society through um, concentration of power. That's a defi good definition of. Uh, revolutionary mind. Uh, and these guys believe like this. They want to use the power of the church to change it completely. So as Marxism uh, is for uh, Western culture, liberation theology is for uh, Catholicism. And they are changing now. They are using, um, for example, uh, identity theologies like LGBT theology, uh, black theology, they're using uh, migrants theology. There is too. They, there's enculturation theology. There is the, and now a part of this identitary kind of theology. There is the ecology, or the uh, integral ecology theology, which is uh, which means for me that they are just following the Marxist international movement because it's going to towards direction. And as liberation theology is. Um, is part of the Marxist movement, it has to follow the Marxist international political movement. So they're just following and trying to make it or trying to make it look Catholic. But it's not. When you look, for example, the, the things they're proposing now, it's so clear it's not Catholic. At the point, for example, uh, that uh, some bishops, some cardinals, as Müller, Pan Müller, and Sara, and uh, all of them are saying, my God, wake up, yes. you know, and the Pope is just, <laughs> you know. But is he? Is he just whistling or is he have his fingers on the strings of the puppets? I'm thinking more and more this is all his creation. He loves it. Yeah, maybe. Maybe yes, Taylor. Maybe yes. I think that he thinks as a Jesuit. And as I said, all the Jesuits have the new, this new, you know, um, generation of Jesuits that are destroying the church, and I, I recommend everybody to read Malakin's uh, Martin uh, Windswept House. That book is revealing, um, and he uh, shows us this double thinking of the Jesuits. He says, for example, that the Jesuits think dialectically. So, in one way, for example, this last weekend here at St. Peter's Basilica, you have the Summorum Pontificum, you have the traditional and classic Latin mass as it should be, you know, with all the traditional words, you know. <laughs> and the other day you had Pachamama. So <laughs> this is this is duple pensar. We, we call this in Portuguese. So this is dub, uh, uh, double thinking. For example, Prince, uh, Francis said in, uh, in a general audience uh, on the, I don't know, it was 14th October, he said, to go against the church is to go against Christ. No, no. To go against a member of the church is to go against Christ because he was uh, talking about uh, the, 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 the conversion of St. Paul. But analyze this phrase, Taylor. Is, is this right? Yes and no. Because, for example, if I go against, I don't know, a good bishop or a good faithful that is faithful to the church, is helping everybody, is a good Christian, yes, it's going to, uh, to strike him, is to strike Christ himself. But if I strike, for example, bishops like Kreitler that say, I'm not going to baptize anybody to strike him is to strike Christ because Christ said, go to everybody else to the world and baptize them. So this double way of thinking, you know, to propose two things at the same time and who wins, wins. This is more like Pope Francis mindset, I think. 
So, and this is very complicated because in a way, he condemns abortion, he condemns gender ideology, he calls feminism um, just another ray of, um, um, I don't know how do I say this, machismo in, in English, but uh, it's, it's another kind of radicalism. Um, he, for example, when he went in Brazil in 2014, uh, 13, 13, yes, 13, he said that uh, the use of um, Marxist categories in Brazilian church was a temptation. He said that. But instead, he calls Gustavo Gutierrez into his office and receives him. He pardons uh, that uh, Ernesto Cardinal. So uh, he acts both ways. And this is very confusing. This paralyzes everybody and puts everybody against everybody. Yes. So St. Peter is there to confirm us, not to, you know, make confusion greater. So I think we should pray more about him and, and, and the, the, the cardinals should ask some very uncomfortable questions to him, I think. Yes. Yeah, the, the, God is not the author of confusion. The papacy yeah. is the principle of union. As you yeah. say, Christ says to him, you know, strengthen the brethren, feed my sheep. This is the role of the pope. The role of the pope is not to extend the political adventures of the EU, the United Nations, or even a, a single tribe in the Amazonian region, if that's what he's really doing, but he's not. This is very troubling. Um, I, you know, I'll be honest, I am more and more concerned about who is Francis, who is Jorge Bergoglio, how did he get elected, why is he there, and where is he going to go? Because he seems relatively healthy we could we could have another seven years of his pontificate it's it's not like you know he's he's wheezing and struggling right now he seems to be going well and he's he's is he 82 bernardo i think he's 82 yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, somewhere around there in a modern age i mean look at look at benedict ratzinger he's 92 i believe <laughs> ratzinger i think he's now just just you know, have God's help because he's healthy. His health is not not so well. But for Francis, um, I've heard that he's not doing so well as he looks. Um, some some sources of mine said that, but nobody knows for sure what is his uh, wealth state. When I so, was in his presence in yeah. May, he was definitely wheezing mm. when he breathed. But then someone told me he he does that all the time. I don't know. If that's yeah, he does. he does. He does. He does like oh, oh, like this. Just, yes, yes, yes. Because he has it. just one lung. Yes. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So. All right. Well, what what is the future? Uh, maybe talk about you know traditionalism. We didn't talk about Castro Meyer. Everybody knows about mm -hmm. Archbishop Marcel Lefebvre. They know about the 1988 consecrations. All the all the controversy. But Lefebvre didn't act alone. He had a Brazilian bishop with him, Castro yeah, Meyer, yeah. right? And and Castro Meyer, as I understand it, he led an entire diocese that remained traditional Latin mass there in Brazil for quite some time. How did that happen? I mean, was that the only yeah, diocese on earth there, that there, remained there, traditional Latin mass? <laughs> I don't know. It's not like a diocese. It's, uh, we call it. It's the only the only one in the world. This is like this is Brazil style. We are good in doing something very particular. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. For good and for bad. Okay, we have, and so we uh, uh, officially it's called an um, apostolic administration. Okay. Um, and uh, they have they they do not have a proper diocese. For example. Uh, the the current bishop is Bishop. Um, oh my God, I forgot his name. Ah, see, yes, Rifan, Fernando Rifan, with a n n in the end, Rifan, and he's the auxiliary bishop. This is he's uh, the assistant assistant bishop of um, Campos. Campos. He's not the bishop. Yeah, but he's all his priests that are ordained by him are all over Brazil. And they have the pontifical authorization to only celebrate traditional mass, and that's their, for example, their charism. Yes. And uh, and the Castro Meyer, who was the bishop before him, who was with uh, Lefebvre, had the authorization of the Vatican 
after the controversy with uh, with Lefebvre to to do this this um, to keep the traditional mass and the traditional right in Brazil because Castro Meyer was at the the Vatican at Vatican II fighting the the, the liberals. He was with Don Sigo, which was a very good Brazilian bishop at the time. Who <laughs> it's very funny. He re- he wrote a book called the anti-communist catechism uh, anti-communist catechism it's wonderful book just you know question and answer mm-hmm. like before you know yes. uh, why why a, Cath- a catholic cannot be a communist it's wonderful um and um, for the brazilian version i wrote the, the the presentation of the book oh okay yeah yeah and then uh, we had for example these two great bishops castro meyer and sigo and they were with Plinio Correa de Oliveira from traditional family and property. Yes. They were, they were together. If you read, for example, De Matei's book, yes, yes, that's it. <laughs> Recommended. Yep. Yeah, yeah. His Genial. book, Revolution and, and Counter Revolution, is very good. Yeah, this this Brazilian was was um, he was with these two bishops during the Vatican Council, trying to push the these. The uh, condemnation of communism, uh, yeah, pushing, yeah, pushing the modernists and trying to, you know, have this uh, condemnation of communism. Because if you read, for example, all the documents that Professor Robert de Matei puts there, you see that a lot of bishops and uh, the the father of the council were asking for a condemnation of communism. Yes, of communism. Yes. All of them, and also on other things. For example, for the the dogma, they wanted the dogma of the uh, Our Lady Assumption and coronation and everything else. And as as Mary, uh, the Virgin Mary, as a mediator, mediatrix, you know, yes, mediatrix, yes. And uh, they didn't do. No. For the communism, we know the reason. It's the the the, the agreement of Metz, yes, yes. And for other things, we don't know so much for sure but we have this good brazilian bishops fighting against liberalism and modernism and everything else and trying to do the right thing but uh we they weren't able because the pope was already committed to in a way to kremlin to the liberals and everything else there is a very important information taylor that i i just learned this uh, i don't know three months ago that jacques maritain he was um, from 48, uh, 1948, um, till his death, he was in Princeton, and I think he died in France, in Toulouse, but he spent a lot of, many years in, in Princeton, and there, in Princeton, in the United States, he knew uh, Saul Alinsky. Yes. And he was a close friend to Saul Alinsky, and Saul Alinsky called him my master. Yes. And during that time, when they were friends, Paul VI called him as an expert to the council. Yes. So not only that, Bernardo. I don't, uh, I don't know it, if people are aware who Solinsky is. I think they, the, your public is aware, but who? Solinsky dedicated his book "Rule to Radicals" to Lucifer, the first radical, the first right. rebel. And you're you're right. In in my book "Infiltration," I trace out the relationship between Solinsky and Paul the Six. Oh my! Did you know Solinsky and Montini met three times? Oh, and guess yeah, who yeah, sat I, the it, meeting? It, it, it Maritain, didn't surprise Jacques Maritain. Heck, my, Maritain was the 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 he bridge. Was the, he was the middleman. Yeah, I I I, mm-hmm. I document the letters and the correspondence and the meetings in my book Infiltration. Mm-hmm. If you read, there's a whole section on there on on Montini. Paul the Sixth, Saul Linsky, and how this and this idea of rules for radicals and radical rebellion and communist organizing. Montini was inter- Montini was reading Saul Linsky's books, invited him to come over to Italy. Yeah, the interesting thing that Salinsky created this technique of the NGOs, yes. this multi uh, differentiation between right. NGOs toward uh, a goal, a big goal, a big objective. And what we have seen at the Senate is just that. It's many NGOs, organizations, institutes, associations, uh, networks, all of them pushing, you know, the same for the same goal, pushing for the eco-socialism, 
more modernism, the horizontalization of the church, the end of hierarchy, the end of good theology, the submission of the church to this pagan culture and everything else. Yes. It's so Alinsky's at the end. Good, good, I mean, good. Yes, that's it. My suggestion is, I know people are going to hit me over the head over this, but I think Montini, I think Paul VI adopted the Alinsky tactics. You look at the weaponized ambiguity, you look at the closing of the Second Vatican Council, you look at the reform of the liturgy in 1969, 1970, and then you look at things like how communion in the hand was made universalized through the 70s and all these things. Even with he, the sc scandals in the Vatican Bank into the into the late sixties, early in, into the mid seventies, all of this stuff looks Alinsky. And this synodality, the, the, the idea of the synod came from his head, from his head. We think, yeah, he was the responsible of creating it. Yes, yeah, yeah. We should translate your book into Portuguese. I have a big, I have a huge bookstore in Portuguese well, we need, online yeah. bookstore. I'd love yes. it. Yes, I, I think it's it's going into. To French and German and Croatian and Spanish, but I don't think there's a Portuguese one planned. I'll oh, so yeah, we'll we'll so talk you know the about people? that when we yeah. You we have a big publish. Okay, we have a big publish in Brazil. We yeah. we are uh, yeah we compete with Amazon in Brazil. Good, the Amazon <laughs> the other Amazon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, th I, that was yeah. one of the things when I was doing research for this book, and I found, you know, these meetings that happened three times with Paul VI and Saul Linsky. I mean, Saul Linsky is the, you know, the mastermind behind the Clintons in America, Barack Obama. And Obama. Yeah, Barack Obama. So to see that the mastermind organizer for that group of people also has deep ties with Paul VI, it's a very, very scary connection. Yeah, August Comte, the, the creator of positivism, said that the, the dream, the best, the best thing that can happen to a philosopher is influence everybody and everything and not be known. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. That's true power. Yes. Well, it's like the old quote, the greatest miracle the devil ever performed was make people to believe he didn't exist. Perfect. Yes, that's it. <laughs> you know? Yes. Well, this has been great, uh, Bernardo. I, I hope we can do this again. I, I wish I, I knew Portuguese so I could better, better communicate, but you've done a stunning no. job in English. Your English is wonderful, so thank you for, for making time in Rome. Uh, when do you head back to Brazil? Uh, this Saturday. Okay. Yeah, okay. from in, in, in two hours and a half, I have to go to... Um, uh, Santa Maria de Pele, de Pele, uh, Trinità de Pellegrini here in Rome because um, the Don Vilmar, which is a good priest here, is going to celebrate a mass for the the, the Holy Saint, the, the old saints. All saints. Yeah. That's my favorite church. Well, it's my favorite church to attend liturgy in Rome. I'll say there's architecture. Yeah. There's other churches I like, but that's where I try to go every day when I'm in Rome to go to the traditional Latin mass. I, I we didn't talk about this, but I, I assume you're an advocate of the Latin mass. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. In, in Brazil, this is a spreading as fire in a field, you know? It's, yes, no, you, you have no idea. I could talk about this for hours, but it's a big, I can assure, a big movement in Brazil, a big movement. Yes. Yes, it's so strong. People are, are craving for that, are craving, it, yes. Is, is just, it, is just for an example, it, it, to, there is a friend of mine called Andre, Andre Abdenar. He uh, has this Catholic center of studies in Belém, in the middle of the Amazon, and they celebrate the Latin Mass all the all Sundays. They have the, the, the pictures that you put in, in, in your Twitter because I saw it. Yeah. You know, they said, oh, Latin Mass in Amazon. It's their group. That's amazing. <laughs> and they are all young so we'll have this for many time here now so they have to <laughs> we are here to stay <laughs> and is it is it my is it fraternity of saint peter is it society of saint pius the 10th uh, is it the no that's the good shepherd that good shepherd institute we called it okay and that's that's yeah. the biggest one in brazil no no we have the saint peter's too okay. we have the fraternity of saint pius the 10th we have uh, this admi uh, apostolic administration okay. and some diocesans priests that Good. can do then have the, the the permission, but this is this is rare. All right. So all and 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 how many places on a Sunday in Brazil do you think estimate has a Latin mass? 
Oh, I don't know. Brazil is so big, my friend. <laughs> Brazil is as big as the U.S. Uh, yes. I don't know how many masses we have. Okay. It's too too much. As many, uh, I don't know. I, I think one can. Hundreds? Yes, 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 yes. Of yes. course. Yes, yes. yes. Yes, at my at my at, uh, where I live in Londrina, we cannot have the classical Tridentina, uh, 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 the Tridentinian mass, because uh, if uh, although uh, the Pope uh, Pope Benedict uh, published the Summorum Pontificum, uh, the, they say okay, it's allowed, but if the priest celebrates it, he sent uh, the next day to Madagascar, you know. <laughs> 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 yes, so <laughs> we uh, started uh, uh, in Londrina, where I live, which Londrina means Little London because it was yes. started by, founded by, by, by British people. And uh, the, we started to do the, the Angelis. So it's the, the rite of Paul VI, but uh, done in Latin with Gregorian chant and versum deum. So, mm -hmm. um, and that is already a big step. And we start. We, we started with a small group of fifteen people, you know, like three or four, five families. And now the the parish is crowded. Yeah. After I don't know two years, yeah. it's so many people. People crave for that. So, and the next step is the traditional mass. So yes. we're doing, you know, step by step, because the bishop, you know, he's more communist than Stalin himself. So <laughs> that's a problem. <laughs> yes. Do you, do you know Fray Beto? No. No, okay. He is a friend of, well, for example, friend, was a friend of, he's alive, but Castro, Fidel Castro is dead. He was a, the personal friend of Castro, personal uh -huh. friend of Lula of Brazil. Okay. And th my bishop was his assistant. I see. I see. Okay. For many years. So, yeah. Good. All right. Well, I'd like to encourage everyone... I to, to check out, of course, you probably already do, subscribe to Bernardo Cooster's channel. It has, you're almost at 800,000. <laughs> yeah, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. It's amazing. Yes. 800,000. Yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's incredible. For YouTube, it's incredibly huge. I'm just hoping one day I get to 100,000. I'm getting a little closer. But yeah, eight, yeah, yeah. 800,000. That's a lot. Yeah. That's a lot. So. Yeah. Congratulations, everybody! Go. I, uh, he's like seven hundred ninety-six. So, I had a help because the president once recommended my channel ah. on his his social network. Said, "Oh, this is a good this is a good channel of information." So it it helped me. Yeah. Yeah. See, I need I know. need Donald Trump to do that for my. <laughs> <laughs> it may not. Help it would me. be I don't good. Know. Yeah. <laughs> You'd be, you 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 would reach a million in a day. <laughs> So we'll, we'll keep up the great work. I, I, yeah. I've, I've been getting to know you more and more over over the last month, uh, reading and, and seeing your stuff, watching your English things and all that in your interviews. Uh, I'm very impressed with you. You're doing great work. Uh, when would this movie come out? And will it be in English? Yeah, it will be in English. This movie will come out next year, just, I don't know, January or February. I think just uh, after the carnival in Brazil, because mm -hmm. before the carnival, Brazil doesn't work. So <laughs> it must be after the carnival. And uh, we're going to put in uh, subtitles in English because, because we have interviews in Spanish, English, uh, I think French and, um, and Portuguese. So we have to put uh, subtitles in every movie. So yes. if Portuguese or in English. So we're going to, to present it in, into the USA, into Italy and uh, France and Portugal. We are trying to do it in Poland. They, 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 they asked us. We are Good. trying. Yeah, but U.S. is for sure. We're going to do it. Excellent. Okay, well, we'll look for that. Uh, everybody, please uh, like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to Bernardo's channel. Uh, support on Patreon. Um, that's any, important. Anything else? No, that's important. I, I would in, uh, encourage people to help and to contribute on Patreon because, for example, these guys here in Rome, they have the support of For Ford Foundation for the U.N., from everybody and we we at youtube you know we're just earning something and something you know monthly of you know yeah. some ads and we have these good souls that you know give some money so uh we have to think more about this and yeah, it, it's it, expensive it, I, I just got a bill for six hundred dollars just for the audio hosting for last month because there's been so many yeah. people doing the audio version i was like oh my gosh six hundred dollars for one month so i mean yeah this stuff is expensive 
when we say help yeah. support, that's what we're talking about. Uh, yeah. Uh, but so yeah, we appreciate everyone who does all that uh, on all fronts. So, all right, well, let's close in prayer. Uh, let's pray a Hail Mary, uh, asking Our Lady to, to help us, help the church in Brazil, help the church in Rome, uh, help the church in America. And Our Lady of Nazareth. Yeah. Our Lady of Nazareth, the real, the real deal. Our Lady. And then, um, and I'll say Our Lady of Nazareth, pray for us when we, when we finish. So that's appropriate. And we'll pray a glory be. All right, mm-hmm. let's pray. Nomine Patris, et Fidi, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in marieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Sancta Maria, Mater Dei, or pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et etor mortis nostre. Amen. Gloria Patri, et Filio, et Spiritui Sancto, sicut erat in principio, et nunc et semper, et in secula seculorum. Amen. Amen. Our Lady of Nazareth, pray, pray for, for us. St. Joseph, pray, pray for, for us. St. Pius X, pray, pray for, for us. All right, Bernardo, thank you so much. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. I've learned a lot, and hopefully uh, you can come on again. We, we can talk some more because there's a lot to learn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I, I must pay attention on your Wikipedia page to see if nothing has been altered. <laughs> that's, right, that's right. I'm going to have to keep my Jesuit eyes from on. the Vatican. <laughs> that's right. That's right. All right. Well, very good. We'll be in touch, Bernardo. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye bye.